I'm Jack Strong, and this is Jack's Fish Tanks TV, and today we're going to an update on my 500 gallon reef tank system. Last time I did an update on this tank, I had nothing underneath the stand besides my sump, and since then I've added a lot more, so let's take a look underneath my tank. I've added much to the tank in terms of equipment since the last time I did an update on it. As you can see, there is a skimmed calcium reactor, a CO2 tank, and a skims protein skimmer underneath the tank. Off to the right, on the side panel, there is that blue glow, which is my cooling fan, which pretty much will just circulate air when I put the cover around the stand. As you guys can also see, I moved the apex mounting board to the right side of the tank from the left, so I did not have to run wires across the top, so they would not get in my way. Here we are on the side of my tank with no viewing panel, and as you guys can see underneath it, I have a 37 gallon tank, which I use in my auto top off reservoir, and my cooling fan, which is an old Tunzi cooling fan. This here is my Apex mounting board. I bought these third strips for ease of use so I can control every single one of my pieces of equipment individually. After I bought these, I realized I'm probably going to put an Apex on the tank, so I probably didn't need them, but they're going to be a nice thing to have for the equipment that I'm not going to plug into the Apex. Underneath those, I have my Apex mounting board, which right now has no Apex equipment on it, but it will soon. Right now it has a Vectra L1 DC return pump control, it has a Tunzi osmolator control box, it also has the ballast for the Vectra L1, the orange box above it is my DC protein skimmer controller, and the one above that is for my calcium reactor which controls the pH inside the reactor. Over here on this side of the tank you can see my CO2 tank, my calcium reactor, also my Skims Protein Skimmer, and my Vectra L1 DC Return Pump. You can also see the float switch and optical sensor for my Tunzi Auto Top Off. Now in the future I'll be doing a review on every single piece of equipment inside this tank. The next thing I'm planning to do for this tank is be putting in the glass because, well, it's here. It's upstairs in my garage, just need to carry it down. The biggest, the big sheet across the front weighs about, uh, 300 ish pounds, so it's gonna be really hard to move. So I'll have to get someone over here to help me with that thing. I need to cut bracing for the top of the tank, which I have plywood sheets that I'm actually just gonna cut into Euro bracing and put it across the top. And there's gonna be three across braces where my returns will come out of the top of the tank. Now, for a segment of this video that I didn't do in the last one, is we're gonna look at my tank and I'm gonna show you guys my aquascape that I've laid out using cardboard. And you guys are gonna vote in the comments if you guys like this one. And in next week's video, I'm going to do a different one, and you guys are going to have to pick which one you guys like the most, and that's what's going to go in my final tank. So here's the layout I have for this week. As you guys can see, it fills in most of the bottom, except for a few spots, which if I'm going to have a stingray in my tank, I'm going to have to have a lot of room on the bottom for them to sit. So I think this one here is a really good option for the stingray. The rock on these would go about 24 inches up into the tank on the highest part, which is more than two-thirds of the tank. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys watch next week's video where there should be glass in this tank and a few more pieces of equipment on it. And also start working on my fish room. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.